What's up, Internet, Net, CNs, VCs, founders, and the Entree Pro Curious? You've made it, and you're here. It's Venture Daily. What's up, guys? I hope you are having a wonderful Friday today. It is the end of the week after all. Smash the like button if you're here. Subscribe and let people know that you're listening to Venture Daily. Guys, we have a great show for you, whether you're on the road listening to us on Spotify, iTunes, or Google Podcasts, or many of the other podcast platforms that we syndicate to or even if you're just watching me on the boob tube i know that a, a couple of you out there hey justin i see you brother i know that you watch me on the boob tubes while you're commuting i don't know how safe that is but please be as safe as you possibly can we got a great show for you today we're going to be covering three news bits and then going into venture deals and the final word of the day before we close out this wonderful wonderful first week of February. The first topic we're going to be talking about here is three venture capital uh, predictions. Yes, three venture capital predictions for 2020 going into that as well as let's do a cha-ching for that. It's a good cha-ching as well as the unstoppable. That's right. The unstoppable cha-ching growth of Facebook that we've seen. Where are they going to be heading next? Who knows? And finally, in our third news bit, we're going to be talking about the big tech responding to the coronavirus. That and more on today's Venture Daily. Woohoo! That was fast, guys. Let's get right... <laughs> we were supposed to do that. Let's do that again, guys. Let's do that again. And let's just jump right into it. Three VC and startup predictions for the year ahead in 2020. 2018 was the year of excess. 2019 was the year of reality checks. And 2020, is this going to be the year of unstoppable growth? Well, according to Silicon Valley Bank's state of the markets report, the markets are still flush with corporate cash. Yeah, it's sloshing around here, guys. And a, and a record dry powder. SVB, SVB, Silicon Valley Bank, anticipates M&A activity to remain strong in 2020. Already, more and more companies are seeking out acquisition opportunities. Below are three predictions from SVB's report for the year ahead. Number one, M&A heats up even more. Large tech companies will wake up to the realization that one of the best ways to grow the top line, acquire new technologies, and stave off competition is mergers and acquisitions. In the last three months alone, we've seen two massive acquisitions. The first was PayPal's purchase of Honey, a deal-finding browser add-on and mobile app for $4 billion. That's a lot of money, guys. Cha-ching. The, the real question is, though, the real question is, is Honey a secure add-on? You've probably seen the news bits about that. The second happened just this month with Visa's purchase of Plaid a fintech company that connects users' bank accounts to apps and services for an eye-popping $5.3 billion. Whoa. Here's the second prediction of 2020. The bull market continues. Well, slowing macroeconomic conditions and the trade war weren't enough to stop tech in 2019. It saw its best full-year performance of the decade, returning 48% compared to 19% in the broader market. This trend is projected to continue into 2020 as companies still have plenty of cash to deploy. Number three is, well, bigger isn't always better. In 2019, we learned that the valuation isn't everything. Many companies painfully realized that sustainable growth and profitability are perhaps more important than growth at all costs. Some 2019's most anticipated unicorn IPOs experienced a harsh reality check in the public markets. SVB predicts that late stage valuation sizes will start to decline as investors take a longer, longer to perform their due diligence. This is a big departure from previous years and is a trend that could define the entire decade. Well, considering all of the implosions that we've had, especially with SoftBank as a prime example, it seems like, well, maybe, just maybe, Venture capital funds are going to be slow in their role, doing a little bit more diligence and making sure they're actually going to be receiving returns at some level, as opposed to just guesswork and just throwing money around. Or as Vitalik Buterin likes to say, sloshing that money around. You guys might have not known that, but Vitalik Buterin, he doesn't like it when you slosh that money around. Let's move on to our next ep uh, 
who's been here. Facebook's a decade of unstoppable growth. Yes, they've grown bigly, guys, big time. Despite an onslaught of scrutiny and scandal over the past few years, Facebook closed out the second decade of the millennium stronger than ever, as Axios' Sarah Fisher reports. So what's here? What's the big picture? The tech giant brought in nearly $70 billion in revenue in 2019, mostly thanks to you guys giving up all of your data, up more than 25% of the year prior and up more than 1,300% from 2012, the year it went public. So why does this matter? Well, Facebook's continued ability to post double digit revenue growth every year speaks to its ability to innovate and adapt and suck more of your data every day. Even in the face of regulatory headwinds and increased competition. So here's a case in point, even in regions like North America and Europe, where the company's user growth has plateaued and privacy regulation has been introduced, Facebook has still managed to squeeze significantly more money from each user every year. You're getting squeezed guys. In the US and Canada, Facebook has increased its user base by less than 4% in the past two years, but has increased its revenue per user there by more than 60%. So what's driving the news? Well, Facebook said that Wednesday on its fourth quarter earnings call that it had settled a class action privacy violation lawsuit by Illinois residents for 550 million. A mere drop in the bucket. Tis but a scratch, guys. The news comes from just months after Facebook settled a suit by the Federal Trade Commission by paying $5 billion, the largest such penalty in US history. For the past several quarters, Facebook has warned investors that it expects revenue pressure in light of increased regulatory scrutiny, particularly around privacy and targeted advertising, something that you guys so much enjoy, I'm sure. But so far, these fines have proven moot in getting the tech giant to fundamentally change its business, which continues to grow substantially. We as users, well, we have to be smart. And I will tell you this, I don't even really, I don't even use Facebook. Facebook has kept itself growing in recent years by getting more creative about advertising formats and products while still adhering to its focus on promoting free expression and making advertising tools broadly accessible. So what's the bottom line here? Well, Facebook recognizes there's a gulf between its prodigious growth and its beleaguered reputation. On an investor call following Facebook's earnings report on Wednesday, CEO Mark Zuckerberg said that over the next decade, his goal was to close the gap by being more transparent about Facebook's values. Quote, we are focused on communicating more clearly about what we stand for. Really, Zuckerberg, what do you really stand for? It's, it's, it's actually kind of confusing. While we want to be liked, we didn't want to communicate our views as clearly because we're worried about offending people. Oh, really? Facebook offending people? Our goal is the next, over the next decade isn't to be liked, but understood. In order to be trusted, people need to know what we stand for. Well, thanks, Mark Zuckerberg, for telling us a whole bunch of nothing. Nope. What do you stand for? Is it privacy? Is it user rights? Is it the freedom of speech? We don't quite really know. There's a lot of things happening at Facebook when it comes to censorship, fake news, these types of ideas, and obviously the political spectrum and the political circus surrounding it. The real question is, is who is Facebook really working for? I'll tell you the answer, because it's really easy. Facebook is working for itself, not you. You're just the data game. And that is today's news bits, guys. In for today, February 7th. That's right, February 7th, I can't believe it already the end of the week. True startup story, guys. You got it. Your company just got seed round financed. Congratulations. You're going to the moon, but now you have to scale. You found great talent out in California, New York, Georgia, and even Eastern Europe. So what communications platform will you be using to ensure your international team is always aligned? Well, the answer is easy. Slack.com for teams. We've used Slack for all of our previous startups and they've supported us in tremendous ways. And we want to give them a thanks today for supporting vchunting.com. Did you also know that Slack is a great tool for personal use? Yeah, I use my own personal Slack channel to drop in documents, notes, to-dos, and follow-ups to ensure that my workflow throughout the day is right on course. I promise you, if you try out slack.com for personal use, you'll end up using it for your team as well. Go to slack.com to check it out. Welcome back to Venture Daily. Wow, Venture Daily, the fastest growing 
daily show in all of venture media. Make sure to check us out on the tweeters. We're always dropping great news that you can use and updates on what's going on in our project here. Follow us on Twitter at Agile Peter. And if you want a daily scoop, especially kind of the personal inner, the personal things that I'm doing, make sure to follow me on TikTok at VC Hunting or Instagram at VC Hunting. Make sure as well to join our daily newsletter, The Daily Hunt, where I'm dropping daily news bits that you can use every day. Let's move in to the venture deals for this Friday, February 7th, 2020. Motor Operandi, the New York-based fashion discovery platform, paid raised $100 million in equity and debt funding. New Enterprise Associates and Apex Digital Fund co-led the round. Congratulations. Attentive, a personalized mobile messaging SaaS platform for brands, raised $70 million in Series C funding. Sequoia and IVP co-led the round. You know, I'm going to check this out, this attentive. Let's check this out. It's a personalized mobile messaging SaaS platform. Oh, oh, bad request. Looks like we can't check that out. SimScale, a Germany-based provider of SaaS application for engineering simulation, raised today raised $29.8 million in Series C funding. Congratulations. Inside Partners led the round. Powell Software, a digital workplace for internet SaaS software provider, raised $16 million in funding. Level Equity and Cap Horn co-led the round. Sochi, a Japan-based social and reputation management platform for multiple location businesses, raised $15 million in Series C funding. Investors include Vertical Venture Partners. Let's check out Sochi. It's S-O-C-I, but let's see if it actually comes out. To manage your social content reviews and ads across hundreds or thousands of locations in a single platform. Wow. Oh, well, for a second, I thought that was Ice Cube. <laughs> Come on, guys. It does look like Ice Cube. The professional version of Ice Cube. The only centralized platform built to address the three critical areas of localized marketing. Ah. Well, if you're a business, maybe you want to check out Sochi or you can go to Meet Sochi, M-E-E-T. SOCI.com. Congratulations on the Series C funding, my friends. Spatial, a Boulder, Colorado based holographic collaboration platform that turns any room into a 3D work, workspace, raised 14 million in Series A funding. Investors, in white, investors include White Star Capital. I have to check this out because I'm intrigued now. Making your workplace 3D? Mmm, I'm intrigued. This website sucks though. It's, oh my gosh, how many pop? All right, we're closing this down, guys. You messed up, Spatial. You had a great idea, but your website sucks so much, I don't even want to visit it. UI and UX kind of matters. App Harvest, a... <laughs> App Harvest, a Lexicon, Kentucky-based ad, ag tech company, raised $11 million in funding. Investors included Steve Case, J.D. Vance, Jeff Oben, and Blake Griffin. Clearly, guys, with some monies, guys. <laughs> Neighbor.com, a self-storage marketplace, raised $10 million in Series A funding, and Dreesen Howitz led the round. <laughs> Cloud Trucks, a San Francisco virtual trucking carrier, raised $6.1 million in funding. Craft Ventures led the round. Now, I've, I've actually been really interested in in the trucking industry. Now, some of you guys might not have known this, but I actually spent a lot of time in 2019 summer researching the trucking industry because I believed there was, air, I still believe that there are areas in which their uh, trucking and shipping and logistics, especially international logistics can be disrupted. However, I, that, that candle burned out a little bit. However, I learned a crap ton about the trucking world and maybe in the future, I might want to build one of those. Who knows? If you're still listening, guys, that's a hint. It may be the future. Nope. Last but not least for venture deals for February 7th, 2020, Stoplight, an Austin-based enterprise API design, uh, design management company, raised $6 million in Series A funding. Next Coast Ventures and Bill Wood Ventures co-led the round. Well, congratulations to all those companies out there getting capital injected into your company so that you can fundamentally change the world, or at least that's what the thesis was, right? Those are your venture deals for Jan February 7th, 2020. This is where the money is going, and this is where the money is flowing. Did you know that there's even more value than just audio or video? 
Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, at VC Hunting, and make sure to sign up for the VC Hunting newsletter, where you'll be able to get weekly news on venture capital, startups, founder stories, and the occasional wisdom extracted from Peter's brain. Go to vchunting.com to sign up. And now, back to the episode. Well, in today's final word, we're actually not going to do a final word. We're actually going to do the third article that I forgot to do because, you know, it is what it is. And so let's do the third article here. It's about tech or big tech responding to the coronavirus. Big tech responds to the coronavirus outbreak. The largest tech companies are responding to the Chinese corona outbreak in two main ways, limiting employee travel to China and trying to make sure that their users have access to accurate health information. So why does this matter? Well, like the virus itself, the spread of misinformation is hard to slow. So what's driving this news? Google has temporarily shut down its offices in mainland China, Taiwan, and Hong Kong. The mainland China office handles some sales and engineering for Google's ads business. Apple said Tuesday it had closed one store in the region. All big tech companies told Axios that they are following CDC advice and limiting non-critical tra- travel to China. Alibaba co-founder Jack Ma is contributing $14.5 million to help fight the spread of the disease, per Bloomberg. In terms of our thought bubble, well, the big question now is whether the outbreak and travel limits lead to lost revenue or product delays. Meanwhile, on the content front, Google, Facebook, and Twitter are all taking steps to promote verified information and not that fake news. Facebook has been giving ad credits to the World Health Organization and the Philippines Department of Health to share information. It's also returning dedicated information modules when users search for terms related to the outbreak. YouTube is once again censoring everybody and returning text results when people search for coronavirus and other terms, reminding users that the situation is rapidly changing while also aiming the point to authoritative video results, of course, like Communist News Network and the Communist Broadcasting Service, or CBS, or CNN. Google Google is also trying to put extra focus on verified information in search results, including showing information that has been fact-checked wherever possible, you know, by people who are basically paid shills. Twitter has adjusted its results to point to authoritative local language information when people search for virus-related terms. And at the same time, Bloomberg reports that false information is spreading fast. The Daily Beast reports that TikTok videos show teens pretending to have the disease. Well, you know how much I love fake news and how much I love the misinformation that's being spread constantly throughout the world. You let me know your thoughts on the coronavirus. Is it that serious or is it not? Let's go into the final word finally here, guys, because, you know, this is my show and sometimes we screw things up. Not really, but we do things out of order. Is what it is, my friends. In today's final word, guys, I hope you're going to have a wonderful weekend this weekend. It's going to be great. Now, you guys know that usually I'm out on the track with my son racing those go-karts, but this weekend I'm not going to be because for some reason, this is really fascinating to me, and it's going to be kind of a, uh, of a dig on a business, but it is fascinating to me that when a couple people leave a large, relatively large business, that they shut down the business services for other people. That doesn't make any sense. Why would if some people that are that are working at the track decide to go on holiday that they shut it down for members? That's why we pay for our membership so we can go there and drive our carts all the time. Uh, so I'm a little frustrated about that, but I'll end up working. I'll probably end up working. I hope that you guys have a better weekend than that, but I'll end up be working this weekend uh, and enjoying myself and maybe just taking a little bit of rest. However, we do have some great interviews that are gonna be posted this weekend, so you wanna make sure that you check those out. The posts from last weekend were awesome. We had Roy Bahat from Bluebird Beta, and we had David Mullings from Blue Maho Capital. I hope you guys got a chance to listen to those, some great interviews. They're always, they're just always getting so much better. In today's final word, really, though, I want to pull from the Shrug calendar and a Lady Cyan at Cyanist. Some of you guys might have seen her. She's a a prolific tweeter, has various opinions, many different opinions. But she said this, and I, I, you know, I I appreciated this out of all the other tweets that I don't generally appreciate. Uh, She said, I believe in maybe. My whole life was guided by it. Opportunity comes when you're open to possibilities. It doesn't or rarely come. It doesn't or rarely comes. 
if you are closed to them. Probably that's a, a fractured sentence of sorts, uh, but it's okay. She believes in maybe. Her whole life was guided by it, and here's the key. Opportunity comes when you're open to possibilities. I hope that you guys are open to possibilities this year in 2020. There's going to be amazing things that are going to happen in your life and my life. Now, day by day, it can seem boring, and day by day, it might not seem like a whole lot is happening. But if you're moving forward, brick by brick, 1% every day, moving towards a goal, that is a, that is a noble thing to work daily grind daily slowly but surely every day towards a noble goal that's just it's, it's worth doing guys so i hope you guys are open to possibilities hope your mind and your heart is open to those connections those opportunities that could arise and take them research them you never know your life could change and so what i'm kind of hoping and that was kind of the context for bringing this up today i'm hoping that even though my expectations for this weekend have kind of gone down the tubes because, you know, I really wanted to cart with my son this weekend and I just sold the, the, the race car. So I'm really excited to get back uh, on something on, on the track going fast. And my engine, my engine for my cart has finally been rebuilt. So instead of being salty about not being able to do what I want, I'm going to be open to the opportunities this weekend. Maybe just maybe I might do a live stream. If you lasted this long, let me know in the comments below whether you'd love for me to do a hashtag Ask a Founder live stream this weekend. Maybe, maybe I'll do one. Let me know. Hit me up on Twitter. Hit me up on fa uh, Facebook. Hit me up on, on our new... I don't have Facebook, guys. Hit me up on our newsletter. Hit me up wherever you, wherever you want. Let me know. Do you want me to do a live stream and talk about, answer any questions that you guys have from a founder? I don't know a whole lot, but I like to give help where I can. I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode and maybe just maybe I'll see you on the weekend. Enjoy it guys. I hope I do.